Welcome to Weekly Market Roundup. I am Sagan Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, based in Singapore. Let me go through the disclaimer first. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on Superior Profit's trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. In today's session, as usual, First, I will look at oil and gold using technical analysis. They tend to impact related stocks. Then I will carry out a top-down analysis looking for potential trading opportunities. How do I do that? First, I look at the broad market. I try to align the trades with the market's direction. I will study the market's strength using NASDAQ and NYSE market breadth and technical analysis of the market ETFs. Once you understand the market strength, next step is to look for the sector industry rotation. Thereby you can align the trades not only with the market's direction but also with the strength or weakness of the sector and industry. I will study that using sector industry scorecard. Once you identify a bullish market and then identify a strong industry in that market, next step is to look for a fundamentally strong stock in the strong industry. I can find that out using stock scorecard in a matter of minutes. And the last step will be to look for a low risk buy point. I can find such buy points easily using the unambiguous Q charts and the Q trade setups as I will demonstrate in today's session again. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let me start with the live system. I begin the commodities analysis using oil. I am looking at the oil ETF USO using weekly backdrop chart template and daily hop on or entry chart template. Together I call this at a glance template because using this template you can decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge in only a few seconds. In the weekly chart oil is inside a triangle pattern bound by resistance memory trend line at the top support memory trend line at the bottom. The weekly candle shape is bearish, the color is neutral. Because it is inside a triangle pattern, you may not take any swing trade until oil goes out of the triangle pattern. In the daily chart, price is going down. It has many memory resistance trend lines no support memory trend line. However, price is supported by this watermark support level. It is more bearish than bullish. You may not look for any bullish trade until USO can break out of this memory resistance trend lines. What about bearish trades? If price goes to one of these resistance lines, and reverses from there. Then you may look for a low risk shorting opportunity. Gold ETF GLD Oil was more bearish than bullish and gold is clearly bullish. It is moving opposite to oil. The weekly candle color is bullish the shape is mixed because it has both upper as well as lower tail. In the daily chart, price is going up. 
it is holding above the upper boundary level. The candle color has changed to yellow, neutral, but not to red. Therefore, gold is remaining in an uptrend and it is overbought because it is above the upper boundary level. That is too extended to try any new long trend. If you already entered a long trend, you may continue to hold the position. But there is no opportunity to enter gold right now in the long direction. That will be chasing the price. And it is clearly bullish, therefore there is no short trade opportunity right now. After commodities analysis, I start with the top-down analysis, starting with the market level. First, I study the market breadth using the NASDAQ and NYSE composite index, both using weekly charts, along with three pairs of internals, new high-low, advanced decline and up-down volume. This market breadth study tells you what is going on inside the market, something that may not be immediately apparent from a study of the market futures or the market ETFs. Both NASDAQ as well as NYSE recovered from the week's lows. However, the traffic light candle color is remaining red that is bearish. NASDAQ bounced up from the memory support line for two successive weeks. This week's candle shape is indecisive. NYSE candle shape is also indecisive. Shape indecisive, color is bearish. Therefore, we have to say overall it is more bearish than neutral and certainly it is not bullish. The internals are strong overall. Only one of the internals that is NASDAQ, new high low closed below zero. All the other internals closed above zero and they actually went up from previous week. The internals are bullish however the broad indices are bearish. We make money in the market from the price moves, not from the internals. It is useful to study the internals. However, we make trading decisions based on the price moves. And right now, the composite indices are more bearish than bullish. That is what market breadth study is telling us. Let's see what information we can gather from the market ETF study. S&P 500 ETF SPY using Q at a glance weekly daily template. I use these headwind signals, possible reversal signals to be aware of possible market reversal. When I saw these bearish headwinds coming, in SPY and they appeared in other market ETFs also. I curtailed my long positions and I had taken some short positions. When price fell down, I had significant profit in them. When it hit the wide direction line in SPY and it was also hitting support levels in other ETFs, I closed my short positions. That was then. What about now? Now in the weekly chart for two successive weeks, we have indecisive shape candle. Candle shape is indecisive, however the color is remaining bearish. What about the daily chart? The daily chart is also indecisive because it is inside a triangle pattern bound by resistance, memory trend line, automatically drawn smart trend line and support memory trend line. There is no clear trend in the daily chart. Combining the weekly and daily, we have to conclude that 
SPY is bearish to neutral. It is not bullish. NASDAQ ETF QQQ. It is showing a very similar picture as that of SPY. In the weekly chart, we have indecisive shape candle for two successive weeks. However, the color is remaining bearish, magenta. And in the daily chart, it is inside a triangle pattern. That is, without having any clear direction in the daily chart. Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF DIA. Here again, we have indecisive shape candle in the weekly chart. The color is bearish. Price closed below the weekly memory support line. The relative performance line is tilting down, showing it is underperforming the market. The daily is showing no clear direction. It is again inside a triangle pattern. Three of the four market ETFs are not showing any clear trend. What about Russell 2000 ETF IWM? Russell 2000 ETF IWM. This is also underperforming the market. We can see that from the relative performance line tilting down. Once again, we have indecisive shape candle in the weekly chart for two successive weeks. The color is remaining bearish. This is one ETF where it is not inside a triangle pattern in the daily chart. It is going down with lower high and lower low. Therefore, it is in a downtrend. IWM is the weakest of the four market ETFs that I have been mentioning for several weeks and in the previous market roundup I mentioned that if the market drop then IWM might give the easiest shorting opportunity. In fact you could take a short trade on this day when the daily chart gave a magenta color candle. The weekly was already magenta therefore you had a kind of go with flow trend following short trade opportunity in IWM on this magenta color candle. After that price drop and you could book profit on Thursday as price hit the watermark support level and bounced up from there. In fact on Thursday on my Twitter page I mentioned that the ETFs SPY, QQQ, DIA and IWM all were holding their support. SPY, QQQ, DIA were holding on to their memory level support and IWM was holding on to the watermark support. That was the time when you could exit the IWM short position with a nice profit. Market breadth was more bearish than bullish. Market ETFs are also more bearish than bullish. Do we have a bullish picture at the sector level? Not really. Here I am studying sector performance across three review periods. The red bar represents performance of this week. Green bar performance of the previous week and blue bar performance of two weeks before that. Any bar coming to the right of the zero line shows the sector went up any bar coming to the left of the zero line shows the sector went down which sectors are up this week only two utilities and consumer staples consumer staples is up by a very small percentage both of these are defensive sectors all the other sectors are down and by significant percentages Energy continues to be one of the worst performers. Over last four weeks, it is down by a massive 16% plus. You could see this weakness from the Q sector scorecard in real time and take appropriate trading decisions.
overall this sector performance is clearly bearish this is another view of the sectors using scorecard and heat map here I look at the sectors across 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently over recent periods 10 day 5 day etc cyan represents strength and magenta represents weakness utilities and consumer staples are the strongest sector now those are the only two sectors that went up this week consumer staples went up by a very small percentage the weakest sectors are energy consumer discretionary and materials using top-down approach you may look for buying opportunities in the strong industries that is utilities and consumer staples and shorting opportunities in the weak sectors that is materials consumer discretionary and energy however the overall market is more bearish than bullish this is not the time to look for buying opportunities is it the time to look for shorting opportunities not really why because we saw several of the market ETFs SPY, QQQ, DIA they are inside a triangle pattern in the daily chart until they can come out of the triangle pattern you may not want to short stocks as well if you open up the latest periods two day and one day period then you can see on Friday that is using the one day period all the sectors went up they went up quite strongly which sectors went up most these are energy and materials the two sectors that were weak for a long time energy went up very strongly over two day and one day and materials went up strongly over Friday this is probably not the time to start buying stocks however if you are holding short positions in energy or material stocks you may be cautious book or protect profit using trading stop and if the strength continues in energy and materials then you may look for bottom catching opportunities in what kind of stocks stocks that are fundamentally strong they will most likely be strong in terms of valuation they will be undervalued stocks and then look for a low risk buy point on the technical charts they will most likely be one of the key reversal trade setups like headwind box or bounce they are unlikely to give trend following long trade setup right now we can infer that from the fact that these two sectors were weak for a long time as I always say sector level is quite broad to make more accurate trading decisions we drill down into the industry level and buy into the strong industries and short into the weak industries if I drill down into the energy sector I see that over five day period all the industries are quite weak they are in magenta color what if I open the latest periods we can see that over one day period several of the energy industries gained strength in fact some of them became the strongest of all the industries if I drill down into these industries which became very strong on Friday we get a number of stocks I can look for undervalued stocks by applying the smart filter and using the one day percentage change column I can instantly see that these undervalued stocks went up significantly on Friday because the sector and the industries were weak for a long time this one day's move 
is not going to give us trend following buy setups. They may give trend reversal trade setups like the Q headwind, box or bounce. I am not suggesting to look for a reversal trade setup in these energy stocks right now because the market ETFs are inside a triangle pattern. If the market can break out of those triangle patterns, then you may look for a buy setup in one of these undervalued energy stocks. Let me analyze another sector that is in the middle, financials. It is holding on to the mid-level score for many review periods. I drill down into the sector and let's see which are the industries in financials that went up most on Friday. Using the one day score, I see regional banks went up most. It is the strongest in financial sectors. It's not the strongest among all other industries because the one day score is not very cyan. It is in the middle, the score is in the middle, but still inside the financial sector, regional banks was strongest on Friday. Why don't we drill down? I can see there are several undervalued stocks where the valuation is in cyan color. I'm going to apply the smart filter to look for only the undervalued stocks. And I can see several of them have very nice earnings growth over one year period, two year period, as well as three year period. I can further apply the smart filter to look for high growth stocks. Now I am left with only five regional banks which are undervalued and are having excellent earnings growth over one year, two year as well as three year periods. From the one day percentage chain, I see all of them went up by between three to five percent. That is a large move for a single day. If the market continues to go up and the regional banks industry goes up with that, you may look for a buy setup in one of these stocks. This is RF, one of the undervalued regional banks that I found that is also having excellent earnings growth. I am looking at RF using the standard Q weekly daily at a glance template. In the weekly, it found support at the memory trend line. In the daily, it found support at the watermark support level. RF displayed a bullish headwind earlier at this point from where price could go up. It displayed a bearish headwind at the very top from which price came down, retested the watermark level created by the previous bullish headwind and then reversed up again with extreme bullish pressure and extreme pressure U-turn. That happened on Friday and it also displayed the bull release signal. If the market was bullish, one could take a long trade in RF on Friday using the combination of box and bounce trade setup by applying their respective unambiguous checklist. Because the market was not bullish for the week, I wouldn't take a long trade in RF on Friday. However, if the market continues to go up and regional banks industry strengthens, then RF may give a very low risk buying opportunity. That is on the technical charts and in terms of fundamentals, it has excellent fundamentals. It is undervalued and it has very nice earnings growth as well. That is how you can do a top-down analysis and combine the forces from the market level, sector industry level, fundamental level as well as technical level to identify a 
low risk high probability trade setup in almost any market condition here from the four market ETFs you can see over five days that is over the week all of them declined significantly DIA was the worst performer followed by IWM then QQQ and SPY SPY was relatively stronger but still it dropped by 0.95% for the week that is quite bearish on the other hand on Friday they all went up the best performer was IWM and all of them went up by more than 1% Though Friday was bullish, overall the week was bearish. Let me summarize. One week ago in the previous market roundup, I analyzed the market outlook as bearish to neutral. Since then price indeed dropped. The market details found support either at memory support level, trend line support level or watermark support level and went up. On Friday what is the market direction now it is indecisive because three of the four market ETFs are inside triangle patterns in this situation it may be best to avoid entering new trades if the market continues to go up then there are several stocks that may give low risk buy setups you may find some of them in beaten down energy stocks we saw several of them went up strongly on Friday and you may find some of them in other industries as well like regional banks again we saw there are several strong fundamental stocks in regional banks that went up strongly on Friday whatever be the market condition by using Q360 degrees analysis where you combine the market level outlook with the sector industry force fundamental force and technical force you are always able to find low risk high probability trade setup that is all that i plan to share in today's session thank you for attending i look forward to seeing you in my next session you may also join the weekly live market meeting webinar that i conduct you may register for that from our homepage. Thank you once again. Have a great week and trade profitably.